So hello and welcome back to Exploring Azeroth with Beryl and Onyx. And Beryl will be returning uh, in this, this week's exploration. But I, I do have to apologize first in that I know I said we were going to be doing Ashenvale last week. And it's because I kind of sort of forgot, which I always forget, about Stone Talon Mountains. Which is too bad, because Stone Talon Mountains has possibly one of the absolute best Horde storylines. And one of the only Horde storylines in it that actually paints Garrosh Hellscream as a reasonable commander. So, if you've never done the Horde storyline in Stone Talon Mountains, I'm just going to give you kind of a basic outline of it. Um, so, when you first come in to the Stone Talon Mountains, you're going to come in here usually from Ashenvale, which is probably why I was also thinking Ashenvale, but I forgot I was coming up from the south. So, you're going to come in here to the Fold. And basically, you're going to be doing a few assassinations for the Horde. You are going to uncover an alliance attack plan. And you are going to go to Kromgar, who is the commander of all of the forces here in the Stone Talon Mountains. And once you get all of these things done, you're going to move on to Kromgar Fortress. So that's where we're going to head next. Now, as you can see, Stone Talon is a very hotly contested zone because it was one of the traditional areas held by the Night Elves and actually the Tauren, and they actually seem to have lived together fairly peacefully for a very long time until after the Cataclysm. I feel like the Cataclysm just sort of messed everything up. You know, what are you going to do? So when you arrive here at Kromgar Fortress, you're going to get some direction from Overlord Kromgar here. Zog, zog. He definitely Drink. is a little over eager. And they're being very, very besieged by the Alliance forces, specifically the Gnomish Air Force. And so your first task is to reactivate the Large Daddy, who is this little night elf girl Clarissa's very favorite thing, other than ice cream. And you're going to go down with your shredder, because that's what the, the Large Daddy is, and you are just going to go and do all sorts of battle over here and then you're going to head over to the mines which are over this way you're going to do some battling with elementals that have been woken up get all of the parts that you need so here's the mine if you can see it and you know you've got some you've got a few different uh alliance forces here you've got to do a lot of sneaking in it's all well and good you go into the mine you deal with all of this you get the parts to make all sorts of fun and exciting bombs it's all sorts of fun and then you're going to go back because if you noticed at the kromgar fortress we had a big old balloon and that is where you're going to do the next battle. But before you go, you are going to get a promotion. I do believe that this is where you become a sergeant in the Horde infantry. And, you know, you, you earn a little bit of respect from Overlord Kromgar. And he tells you that you really do need to head over to Maklajin. So that's where we're going to head to next. Along the way to Maklajin, you have to traverse the dangerous webwinder path. You know, so named because of the spiders that are in the area. And uh, 
you know, you arrive here. And when you get here, they have a little bit of a alliance problem. I feel like that is the overarching story of this area. And in this area, the alliance have actually entered into a a deal. They've they've entered into an alliance. The alliance has entered into an alliance with the Grim Totem Torin. And you need to collect a bunch of reagents down here and get all ready to do a nice big voodoo ritual. And you're going to enslave some kobolds to use as cannon fodder and throw them against the alliance and break the siege. And then you are going to return to Overlord Chromgar and he is going to promote you again. You are going to become a, a champion of the, the Horde infantry. And then you are going to be sent on to the Cliffwalker post. Now before you get to the Cliffwalker post, you're going to make a little stop. You're going to be riding on this lovely Chromgar hot air balloon which has got a big old bomb under it that plays a big part in what's coming up. And, well, at the uh, Sludge Works here, which is a lovely goblin facility, you can tell by all the pollution everywhere, um, you're going to refuel your hot air balloon here. And, of course, while you're here, they're going to need a little bit of help. So you are going to wipe out some Night Elf spies. You're going to eliminate a wyvern colony and then you are going to jump back on your hot air balloon which I would do except you know I'm not in the middle of the quest but you're going to jump on your hot air balloon and you are going to head over to the cliff walker post which you can see right up there ahead of us cliff walker post obviously because it is up on the cliff and when you arrive at the cliff walker post, you are going to find out that Chromegar's subordinate, General Grebo, you're going to find him there in a heated argument with the Torin chieftain of this village. And that is right up here. Let's see, where is High Chieftain? There he is, and there is Grebo. So they're in a little bit of an argument. You know, um, Grebo is claiming that the Horde has intelligence, that the Night Elves are hiding a weapon of mass destruction at the Thaldra Grove, and that the Horde needs to use the bomb and take it out before the Alliance can use their weapon against you. But the Torin Chief Cliffwalker claims that there is no such weapon, and the Grove is just a training facility for Druids. You know, he, he also insists that the, the Grove isn't even affiliated with the Alliance and that the General needs to delay the planned attack and that the, the Torin Chief, Chief Clickwalker, can actually prove this. Grebo is going to hesitate in deploying the bomb, but order the adventurer, that's you, to go assist in the siege of the Thaldra Overlook. So you're going to go and do that, and Chieftain Cliff Walker is going to ask you to visit his son and find out the truth. You're going to go there, you are going to find the druids in an utter panic. And when you go up to the top of an ancient tree that's in the center, you're going to find the, the chieftain's son dead. And you're also going to find out that... Um, Maybe there's a little spot of rot in General Grebo's heart because that is who the dead chieftain's son is clutching the insignia of. So, then you're going to head back here to the Cliffwalker post. You are going to uncover Grebo's duplicity and, of course, you know, Marsha and the High Chieftain are absolutely gutted over their son's death and um, they're going to you know confront Grebo 
Grebo will fall to you and and the two Torans, but now you're under threat of being executed for treason. So, you know, they, they ask you to go to General Kromgar, and he's not exactly happy about all this. And when he comes back to the Cliffwalker village, after you tell him what happened, he burns the village to the ground. And he is about to force you and everyone else to watch. And he sends off the bomb, and he obliterates the druids. And uh, right as he does that, Garage Hellscream is going to step through a portal and confront Chromgar. Chromgar told Garrosh, or tells Garrosh that he was just following orders, and um, Garrosh doesn't exactly react well to it. He says that he did not order the killing of innocents, and he kind of takes out um, he kind of takes out the general. And he's about to take you out too, but High Chieftain Cliff Walker will intervene and explain to Garrosh what happened, and everything, I would say, works out all right. But it really doesn't, because this is sort of a, a terrible war crime that the Horde does. After you complete this quest, this entire tree down here will be completely taken out, and there will just be druids running every which way in utter terror. But this is one of the few instances where Garrosh really did step up and prove that he was not always the bad guy that he got painted at the end of Pandaria. So I thought that was a little, an interesting way to do this. Now I am going to turn this over to Beryl, because honestly, the other reason that I like the Stone Talon Mountains so much is they have some of the absolute best houses that I wish we could actually use as player housing in the entire game but before we go we're just gonna run down here to the charred Vale. it is the home of a bunch of black dragons and elementals and it's aesthetically it's beautiful but it's also a little bit on the horrible side just because everything's on fire not much over here except for a bunch of cute little black dragon whelps and i do believe Yep, there is a big old black dragon over there. Can't remember exactly what the questing over here is. I'm pretty sure it might be an alliance quest that, that you have to fight these dragons. It's been a while since I've done the questing in this zone. But I do know that the quests in this zone are actually really fun and really deep. At least on the horde side. But like I said, let's switch it over to barrel. And I'm going to show off some of my favorite houses in this entire game. So it's been a little while since we have seen Beryl. Say hello, Beryl. And, um, kind of missed her. But here we are at Far Watcher's Glen, which, as you can see, features a lot of night elf architecture. But with a little bit of a worgen flair. You can see all of the absolutely beautiful ravens, and you've got a lot of a lot of worgen over here. You've got some some dogs over here with what looks like he's probably a worgen, but you know, you've got Lolo and Vern, the the hounds, and like I said, I love these little houses. If Blizzard ever makes player housing, I am so torn because honestly, so many of these houses look really good. And, you know, this does count as a house. You have your own little bedroom, your own little spot to sit and eat, and even a reading nook, which I, I have a, a huge weakness for... 
Blizzard's design of these houses. And this area actually has two. So if you're looking for a place to just claim as your own that don't even have NPCs in them, Far Watchers Glen is one of the best. Um, you've also got the inn here and a flight path, which makes it an even better area for housing. And, you know, you also have, if, if you didn't want your own house, you do have this nice inn. Got a couple of beds up here. And we'll head up. And there's even a couple more beds up top. So, you know, if you're looking for a good little place to just kind of hang out. I mean, granted, you do have the charred veil there. But if you don't look at the charred veil, you have this beautiful seascape that you can just sit out and watch the ocean and try to ignore the fact that there is a battle going on all around you. So one thing that's always puzzled me about the Stone Talon Mountains is this big area that Beryl is in right here. It, there's nothing here, but it feels like there should be. It's a huge area on the map, and I know it's not completely unique among especially the classic zones of World of Warcraft, but this is such an untapped area. And I cannot tell you how often I have run around in this area trying to figure out if there's something hidden here. I've never found anything hidden here. If you have, drop it in the comments down below because I've never been able to figure out what that area was even actually meant for. As far as I can tell, there's not even any resource nodes over there, but maybe there are, and I just don't know about it. But I haven't found any hidden houses or anything else in this area. All right, now we're going to go in and check out this, this poor, doomed Thaldra Grove. Um, if you're playing on the Alliance side, you actually have a quest that will send you in here and help you rescue a couple of these druids before the bomb hits. Unfortunately, you can't rescue them all and everything here will end up completely obliterated. So... Despite the fact that you have a nice little inn and a really nice apartment up here, unfortunately the apartment gets completely ruined. As you can see, here is, here is Orthus Cliffwalker. He is the son of the chieftain of the Torrens. We've got a bunch of helpless young dead druids. So... Not the best apartment, because of course it's full of dead bodies, but a very nice night off apartment nonetheless. But yeah, we'll just do another little run around this poor doomed grove. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. The Far Watchers Grove is probably the best for housing. You know, if, if you're going to look for a place that your your character can just be like this is my house <laughs> which is something i like to do i i like to uh claim that beryl is just the real estate agent of world of warcraft probably not the only one but you know a girl can dream and then yeah we're just gonna head up here look at these night elf ruins up on the tops of these cliffs and next week we will actually be heading into ashenvale um yep and that is desalus and that is not where we are going we need to head back north towards ashenvale like i said that is going to be probably it for this week there are a couple other places there is a a horde pet battle trainer in stone talon mountains she is over in the webwinder path a little bit hard to get to but marked on the mini map not a hard battle 
But yeah, that is about it for Stone Talon Mountains. I'm sure that I've missed a lot of really cool stuff, but it's been a while since I've been here. I just wanted to really highlight the horde questing in this area. If you've never done these quests, they are a thousand percent worth doing just because I, I'm not fond of Garage Hellscream, but this is one of the few times that you really kind of feel like maybe there was a really good character under all of that bluff and bluster. But until next week when we move on into Ashen Vale for real this time, thank you as always for joining me on this adventure, and I will see you next week. Say goodbye, Beryl.